sure just send me the link and i hello. should be able to hi hello everybody welcome to data ki baat so how would you feel when you spend lot of money into your data management program or buying some tool uh, and thought that it will solve all of your data problem but in fact what you realize later is that you have not achieved what you really wanted to achieve out of that tool or technology yes that's the topic for today where we are trying to go a little you know away from the process and technology and talking about the human aspect of data management or data governance and that's where today i am going to invite my guest today who will be able to help us talk through this and you now we are hoping for a you know very beautiful and informative discussion today okay so let me welcome tejashwi here and then take the conversation ahead hey tejashwi Welcome. Hey, Sanjeev. Can you talk about uh, yourself a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me on your show. And in fact, uh, yeah, that's a great topic. Which, uh, in fact, we have come up with human aspects of data management and governance. Yeah. Well, I have been in the data industry for quite some time. You know, ages. In fact, you can say. Um, so when I started with, uh, you know, Infosys as a software engineer, I was a, I was, I was. in fact coding in mainframes so if i look back you know i should say that is a uh, an excellent career progression that i had from coding into mainframes to being a data analyst a business analyst and then a data governance um, practitioner and a data management practitioner and in fact i have a, a book that i got uh, published in 2017 uh, one of the um best pre sold books i would say well uh, you would have to say whether it's um you know that um whether it's best or not but i would i would rather say that you know it's there on the market but uh, it's up to you guys to actually go through it and put your comments out there yeah so i think um, i i've just flashed the link over there to just so that people can have a look at it and then go ahead and then uh, you know see see for themselves yep thanks for sharing yeah yeah brilliant and uh, in fact when it comes to the human aspects of data management and governance let's go back to the basics touching upon the basics of data management we always knew that you know there is a cio organization out there in most of the firms which in fact takes care of having to manage information and relatively the data but as we progress through certain level of maturity in having to manage data its quality its metadata its architecture there's a specific science that has evolved which in fact is you know data management as such and there is also data governance which is further an aspect of data management per se right. and uh, in the industry when we talk about data management and governance sanjeev perhaps you know uh, you can put your thoughts around what do you what do you think is data management and what do you think is data governance absolutely that's that's a you know a great one and that's where the whole you know uh, thought process and difference come right so when you are talking about to me right when i think of really managing things and then governing things so managing talks and gives lot of actions and then then when i think about a, from the governance standpoint right it is yeah. basically driving those actions so it is you can tell and you can probably think that it is different but let's do it do it this way so i need to uh check my data before i am entering based on certain rules right that's action somebody would take but what are those rules those rules would be basically put by somebody who is really looking at that data owning that data and putting those rule across you so you are following those processes for those policies and standard to take that action so while you are really doing that thing taking that action you are driven by yeah, some policy and process right? yeah. that's where the whole idea comes what what are your thoughts yeah in fact i would resonate your thoughts you know data management is more to do with the technology capabilities of you know pipelining data storing it managing it consuming it and uh, archiving it or decaying it or deleting it it's it's more technology focused right at the same time we need a process and a people aspect of having to enable data management 
and that is what is missing out there and for the past 10 15 years we in the industry yourself myself and other practitioners and leaders have been trying to set this formalization out there in terms of making data management a specific science a specific mm -hmm. routinely executed set of activities that can in fact bring that formalization across and that's where we had the advent of chief data officers mm -hmm. And then there is a new art or a science that came up, which is called data governance. And people, in fact, started, you know, embracing data governance as a part of data management. I tell you the way I perceive data governance. Yep, so now we are very clear about what. Yeah. So now we are very clear about what data management is. It's it's our activities on having to manage data quality, metadata architecture, and how data is being pipelined and other aspects of how data is being consumed as well as technology enablers. While data governance is purely focused as you know, a science of having to amalgamate the process and the people aspects together, mm -hmm. that can, in fact, give a formalization to data management. So what is my first accountability or a responsibility as a data governance guy? I just need to help the data management or the chief data office in terms of formalizing that particular function. So how do I formalize it? I set up a set of processes. I build an operating model. I give them certain choices on how, in fact, they can get to an outcome of better data quality or better managing their definitions, glossaries, mm -hmm. and architecture. Mm -hmm. Then what I look at is how I can get in some sponsorship for these activities that, in fact, can better manage data. And that's what data governance starts with. And further, we proceed to having to monitor and give guidance to data management or data managers and data analysts mm -hmm. and on how better there can be a business outcome from this data, what we call as an asset. And that's the way I look at data governance, which starts mm -hmm. with formalization, assisting sponsorship, having to direct assess and monitor data management activities. So, uh, I mean, you, you, you used a very, you know, uh, you know, a generic word. I, don't, I know we can you know, really dig in more about it, but uh, process policies, right? Do you think that it has become so much process heavy and policy heavy that there is um, probably a less consideration about the other aspect of data governance and hence it is failing? Yeah, that's a good aspect. In fact, I think, uh, you know, most organizations today, which, which in fact are uh, Fortune 100, Fortune 500, Mm -hmm. If you take these organizations, uh, most of them are policy heavy. So mm -hmm. what happens is once there is a data governance function, they put in a set of data management policies, which are to be abided by everyone in the organization. Right. And there is a policy review that happens half yearly or yearly, which in fact looks at if people are in fact embracing data quality actively and what is the score of data quality against the Six Sigma level. But what really is missing out here is, you know, in fact, I started this way. Mm -hmm. I started by having to put a policy. But later, I got to understand that, you know, when, in fact, we enforce data management principles on people, mm -hmm. there might be lesser impact on the outcome by having to enable the people who are supposed to manage these data-based activities. But instead, right. it's it's more of a question of, giving a choice out there to the organization mm -hmm. and to the people out there in the mm -hmm. organization to say, you know, we are okay if you follow the guidelines. Here are a set of guidelines that we can say that, you know, if mm -hmm. you do a data quality assessment, you'll be able to know where the data is bad. You can, in fact, use it for better operational outcomes. And uh, in fact, you can use the tool sets that you would want to prefer. We don't enforce on anything. We just need an outcome. We just need you to manage it better. And that's where we create an awareness across an organization by putting in a set of best practices. Mm -hmm. And choices is what I always stress on. Correct. I mean, that's where I think the choice, uh, uh, personally, I would say menus. And in this case, right, it is much more so people, right? Because it's a group of people you are putting in place to manage your data, uh, data govern your data, and control your data, or maybe put it into a right use, right? So when it comes to group of people, I always felt that more of a 
more of a process heavy and you know policy heavy and re like you said right reinforcing that piece and then look at this not enforcing but giving them a choice there is there is a lot of difference between these two things i am not exactly. saying we should not we should not in fact put the rules and you know regular um, those compliance requirement in place what i'm trying to stress upon is that and like you write this a great choice so if you are giving them a choice to really take their best judgment and they should also be aware that what if if they are going with the choice a versus choice b what is the implications what are the repercussions what would happen which probably would not be right for them or for the organization if that kind yes. of a mindset we start bringing that's where we are hitting that human aspect uh, rather than really becoming a lot of policy and bombarding them with and that's where i think one of your article i was reading right you where you stressed upon uh, putting design thinking uh, in in data governance yeah. right and 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 yeah. one aspect that i wanted to bring here is that giving them a choice so that there is something called uh, I, i i was reading about and i don't know whether we use it or not but uh, i think it is going to be much more useful if you start looking from the choice uh, architecture perspective which states that if you create a environment where you provide people will with the choices which you really want them to take but they own it and the context that you design around it so that you get the desired result so that's the whole idea of giving them a choice but the choices are obviously in alignment with your vision or your data governance you know processes that you want to put so what are your thoughts can we use this kind of a thought process because it is really different uh, revolutionary maybe i don't know whether people are using it or not and how about design thinking yeah, yeah. all the respect in fact yes i think when you touched upon this choice architecture definitely yes uh, the way I, you know i would prefer data governance consultants or in fact data governance functions to look at having to enable people in their organization is by having to put in certain choices of operating models so let's say you know we can have an operating model that in fact can be a self service driven we can do an assisted service we can do a full service and certain certain choices like this can in fact you know help help each of the divisions or the functions introspect what capabilities they have and they can pull on assisted service or a full service if in fact they would want to take a choice but giving choices will in fact help them reach a same outcome whatever be the approach they might be using but i'll tell you how i uh, arrived at these three choices okay so in yeah. fact back you yeah, have back in 2011 i believe so i was doing a design thinking workshop mm-hmm. i liked the workshop it was one of the earliest workshops i was there in so we got to understand that you know we can reiterate a problem in a different way by empathizing with the users or with the people mm-hmm. so in fact let's say we have a data catalog okay and uh, you know an organization is not getting enough business terms and definitions in there Mm-hmm. so we just need to understand what the problem really is is the problem not being able to curate the data definitions in a catalog or is the problem really about you know building in awareness in the people so that they can understand that there is a catalog in place yes. which they can use to reduce their efforts mm-hmm. or is the problem really about knowledge workers moving out of the organizations and the knowledge moving out within from the organization rather i would say which in fact can be cataloged in a data dictionary or some other namespace or a data asset that way mm-hmm. so having to look at the problem and empathizing with the people or the users mm-hmm. will actually help us in terms of better putting a problem statement that can in fact resonate well with an outcome and this is a continuous process which we need to do as we get to understand that you know um as we empathize with the users we find a solution approach we actually iterate the same solution approach as to you know if i enable a single sign on how does mm-hmm. it impact help the users are they seamlessly able to get into the catalog how do i build awareness you know with talk shows within the organizations by putting up banners out there it definitely helps right so right. we are looking at various ways of having to enable users in terms of 
getting through that problem statement. And in fact, design thinking definitely helps. It's very iterative. It gets us to look at a problem holistically while empathizing with the users. And uh, one thing I would stress on is, again, the data catalog. Since you brought on this topic of data catalog, yes. I mean, I would rather ask you as to why do you think we need a data catalog and how, in fact, you know, do you think data catalog is a technology or a people aspect? So, uh, I think I, I, I brought that context you know, uh, in the beginning itself, right? Because uh, that's that's one area where I have, and with all my interactions and with my experience, you know, personally as well, uh, I feel that most of the time people, uh, you know, organization level, the, the, the struggle is to really finding the right data, finding yeah, it when they really need that and, and, and take action on that. So yeah. um, if you, if I have to straight go to the point, right, what I would say is that, even if you end up you know, having a lot of you know, budget and there is a sponsorship around and you go ahead and buy the best of the tool available in the market, what would happen is that the tool is not going to just help you miraculously and then give you all those that you are looking for, like really all the data that you have in the organization. It is still a lot that depends upon the people. And like you rightly said, right, the environment in which you are trying to put this whole uh, thing the context in which they are operating and the choices that you're going to give them to be able to help you curate that data, data catalog. Data catalog is nothing without a proper curation over time. That's not going to happen in a day. And how do you curate that? I mean, there are, there are a lot of ideas around AI and ML use of those, but those cannot go and crawl automatically and get you the right things. They works when you have the data and they help you tag those properly. They help, they help you uh, give the lineage properly. There also your eyeball review process is required, right? So and, and what I'm trying to stress upon uh, yeah. is that you can get the tool, you can crawl through it, you can collect everything, and then the AI ML probably will start working. There also AI ML wants you to confirm that. So that means throughout the entire process of really procurement of the tool till the time you're realizing that benefit of catalog, you are still dependent lot on your people and that's where the, the yeah. whole thing is, right the people behind your data are the one who is going to make the data worthwhile or worth use usable so i mean the answer is heavily on people i would say i am personally and then you have you got to have a process and then finally the technology should support those desires my people and my process should be supported by my technology that's where the whole idea uh, of you know putting things from my perspective yeah, definitely. I think that's an apt answer. In fact, I resonate with what you just said. I wouldn't say, you know, uh, I, I would accept to some of the vendors advertising out there. You know, you get your data catalog. It will work wonders for you. No, <laughs> it, it definitely doesn't. We yeah. still need to have people putting in data definitions in the context, classifying data, and then having some artificial intelligence or machine learning having to do the labeling or crawling across the data stores. Yeah. So that you know the physical terms can be mapped with the you know the business terms that are being curated by the data analysts or the knowledge workers out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's an apt way of having to look at the people aspect of the data catalog, only through which we can have a successful catalog. But but don't you think that it's not only about data catalog? I mean, if throughout the entire data journey that you are trying your organization to be really taking on. Uh, those uh, digital transformation. There are many names to it, right? But ultimately, it means to me, I see data there over there. If you're talking about digital transformation, you are in fact talking and committing to a better use of data. So that's where the data management and governance would come. But what? it's not only data catalog, uh, basically anything that you want to do with data. You have to have those people aspect uh, very much in play yeah, and yes. ensure your success over there. I mean, you. Uh, you can think of various business terms. I mean, in your you know context or domain also, you can you might come up with some of the terms that uh, people wonder that okay, hey, what is this term A means or what is this term B means? What is this term C means? And are they really different or same? That really help you decide that which one should you be using. I mean, I can take a classic example uh, without getting a lot more into the detail. But uh, the, I mean, uh, there is one of one of my friend out there on, on the LinkedIn because we really have a lot 
in, in the connection, right? Uh, so they, they got into this whole data catalog concept. They were really bullish around making sure that all their um, you know data, organization data assets are at one place so that they can just do Google like search and then things start working for them because it used to take a lot of time for them to be able to find the data and use it at the right time at the right place for the right yes, reasons. Yes. But that was not yes. happening. And why it was not happening? Because they were really scattered. Most of the information were in people's minds. This was the key city cues. This was the key criteria for them that people are working there for 27, 28, 30 years. And they they know everything that they really remember and that was critical but when they really got to the implementation they forgot that critical ctq the people were not somehow put into or mobilized in a way that they keep those information dumped into the tool and the tool was basically of no use so so yeah. so in fact so I think that, yeah yeah so the technology aspect yes it does matter to have an Excel sheet or a tool which, in fact, can curate all the terms. But it's, in fact, the people and a definitive process which can help curate uh, the business terms, the context in which a business term is being captured. So there is a classic example or a question that I ask everyone out there. Mm -hmm. So how does a nominee differ from a beneficiary? And whenever I ask this question, you know, people start scratching their heads. You know, and uh, that's when I say that, you know, uh, the simple contextual definition to a nominee is something like a, a nominee is not a participant in a transaction when an account is being opened. Mm -hmm. But a nominee can become a beneficiary while an account is being closed. Mm -hmm. But a beneficiary is not a participant in the transaction during account open. So as we get to understand you know, data definitions better and the context in which a particular data element is being used in or mm -hmm. is being created in, mm -hmm. It helps us better manage our definitions and the data. So we know once we put these definitions out there, along with the context and the classifications, mm -hmm. it helps a data analyst or a reporting analyst pick up the right data element. So today, you might ask uh, an analyst to pull out a report on how many beneficiary addresses do we have there in a particular data mart. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first step you will be looking at is having to understand what a beneficiary really means. How is it linked to a nominee? And uh, that's where when once he gets to have an inference on what a data element or a nominee or a beneficiary really means, that's when he can pull up a report. So that's where we are trying to cut short on the uh, time that an analyst spends by helping him with a catalog, mm -hmm. you know, which in fact can help him better understand on what he needs to source, where he needs to source, how he needs to source it, what is the quality of it, and other aspects like what is the privacy and the security aspects of it as well. And uh, one thing, Sanjeev, I think you rightly stated was it's not only data catalog, but it's overall data management as such, where we need to stress on the human aspects. Mm -hmm. And there is one other classic example, you know, I keep stating. So back in the 1800s, when the horse carts were introduced, mm -hmm. uh, they were introduced first in the London. And there was a route between London to Farrington where, in fact, horse carts were transferring people. Mm -hmm. There was a horse cart that started perhaps on a good Sunday. The Monday, there is the next cart. The Tuesday, there are two other carts. So the number of carts started increasing, which were, in fact, transporting the people. And that's mm -hmm. when, you know, there are good minds which start commoditizing on this aspect. Mm -hmm. And what happened then is there is a firm which in fact commoditized all these particular horse carts which were transporting people mm -hmm. and uh, it always had a challenge because the horse driver or the cart driver in fact had the complete accountability of having to manage his cart as well as the horses uh, starting from having to feed the horses to looking at if the horse is really work working as per its uh, you know good health and capacity mm -hmm. And then he got to understand that, you know, yes, the horse carts are managers. They're in fact managing their carts and the horses. Mm -hmm. But I need something, some aspect which can help uh, myself monitor all these horse carts while they transport the people. So what he did, he put in guideposts between London to Farrington. And he had people there monitor these carts while they were transporting people. And whenever there is a bad weather or snow, 
they used to tell that you know the carts need to take a different road whenever there was a breakdown in the cart they were the ones who were actually helping the drivers in terms of fixing the carts mm-hmm. and uh, they in fact helped the people reach safely by stopping buglaries and uh, having to you know uh, create a safe environment so these guide posts which in fact were erected between you know uh, the starting point as well as the destination in fact were termed to be data governance posts so that's right. a simple example which we tend to say that governance is all about guiding the analysts as well as the practitioners in terms of better managing the data and these choices which in fact governance gives across to data managers is something mm-hmm. that they can pick on and uh, put the right choices or any choices that they feel as per their capabilities and achieve the same outcome right. so in this in this particular example the outcome of a traveler in a horse cart is reaching the destination safely Absolutely. within a particular time as he was said that he would be reaching there um and uh, you know not having to go through certain buglaries or anything on the road so these are the outcomes which in fact you know i would term as are possible only with the people aspect people aspect so you know very interesting uh, so so oh, glad you liked it yep no it's it's really is so let, let's put it this way right i mean and we talked about uh, possibly that is one of the suggestion that outcome that people can take out of this call is right i mean probably people will, will, will probably think that hey okay how do i make sure that i am considering the human aspect right so the answer is that like uh, they just we just give example right of a cart and then the the cart manager let's let's call him a cart manager right he is basically uh, trying to help those people you know take the right decision so that's where the whole i mean if you want to go uh, i would request everybody to probably go and read that uh, choice architecture and choice architects and uh, there is a concept called nudge cart the driver right uh, with, a, with some kind of a positive re- reinforcement you can call it some kind of a positive cues but he is still independent of taking the decision he is still going to still make a choice of not following that rule i mean that might so happen right i'm not saying that it is good for data yeah. governance but if you allow people by saying that hey if you take this route you are you are going to be successful or you are going to reach the destination in a best possible way without uh, with uh, less hassles and cost and all, all those good things so it is basically nudging people to make the right choices exactly. and make the right decision without pushing something on that and that's what choice engineering says it says that you create a process or environment in which the people can really steer or take decisions and make a better choices without really mandating those and that's the real definition i'm just reading it out for for everybody right so choice engineering is a is a is a process or environment where you basically make people take those decisions based upon their best ability and judgment not mandating it that's where the whole idea of choice architecture and choice architects everybody is a basically a choice architecture even if you as a team leader you are a choice architect because you are trying to give your people when you are managing some choices and those choices are basically aligned with your organization objectives you are you are you are giving them a choices in a so uh, very good manner uh, that they are choosing it and still you are getting the right results so that's where the word come right choice architecture you architect it in a way that people take the right decision so that's that that's a great point i think mm-hmm. a great great analogy uh, you know uh, they just you gave right uh, i think uh, that's the message uh, for people here hopefully right yes yes definitely okay so uh, i mean as we are really getting closer to our talk today uh, i think we can uh, still you know uh, have people questions send us a question and we can answer those in your book i will go to your book because that's something that uh, you know i was i looked at and then i you know approached you, approached you for this discussion and also your uh, idea of design thinking into the data governance field uh, how i mean something that you have experienced personally like your mm-hmm. your wisdom your experience before we you know uh, say goodbye to the user for today something that they can just you know use in take away yeah definitely i think uh, in fact when when you said sanjeev that we'll have a conversation today i got a copy of my book oh great okay this is how it looks yeah and uh, 
you know i can post a link on you know the I webcast as well for people they can always get it from amazon.in and uh, you know and that's great yeah yeah definitely i can run some discounts as well uh, if if they are coming out from this webcast you know <laughs> so they can go by hashtag geta ki baat would that work <laughs> yeah yeah definitely why not they should be getting some good good discounts yeah. on there okay perfect perfect so great i think uh, 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 we will basically hope that uh, they go and you know you know buy it and use this uh, you know uh, discount offer that you are you going to provide and uh, i would request everyone to uh, this is a very big subject 30 minutes is not enough uh, wherever the human aspect comes i personally believe that it become much more complex than what you think right we are trying to give a idea or touch an idea that can be think more from the human aspect and design or put some policies in place so that it is much more comfortable for people to be able to follow rather than getting overwhelmed that was the whole concept and we we talked about uh, choice architecture choice architect and the concept of nudge so nudge theory is a book uh, you 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 can all you, all of you can probably go and read that out so uh, since this topic is very complex please post us a comment a question and myself and tejasvi will take that up and answer and if needed we might probably spin up one more talk where we will go much more deeper right there should yeah yeah should be should be happy to take a conversation further on how to imbibe design thinking and gamification into the regular right. data management practices but definitely using the principles of choice architecture into an operating model will definitely work for the organizations out there um we just need to have this thinking imbibed into the daily you know Absolutely. working practices right. great so thank you very much uh, tejashwi for you know uh, joining data ki baat today and sharing your thought and you know insights from your experience i hope user uh, must have enjoyed so um, i have thoroughly enjoyed the conversation today with you so thank you very much have a great day yeah thanks sanjeev thanks. for having me on data ki baat and uh, yeah it has been an excellent conversation looking for forward to a next session as well with yourself sure thank you thanks thank you very much uh, everyone for watching data ki baat post your questions and we should be able to you know put some answer over there thank you very much